um, hello everyone um, very good afternoon to everyone over here thank you so much for taking interest in our topic so today we'll be talking about overcoming imposter syndrome and gaining confidence as an open source mentee so let us imagine this you have heard a lot about open source and you open github you find something that you really want to contribute to but you go through the contributors or the maintainers and you feel like you're underqualified so that's imposter syndrome you might even feel hesitant to comment on issues or work on them so today we're going to be talking about overcoming that feeling trying to gain confidence talking to mentors all of that so before we get started please allow us to in introduce ourselves uh, so hello everyone uh, i would like to introduce myself uh, i'm asmit malkannavar currently a mentee at async api organization and uh, i'm pursuing btech in computer science and business systems uh, my background lies in product design and uh, uh, creating user centric uh, interaction design and i'm deeply passionate about open source projects and i have uh, contributed to various open source projects throughout my entire uh, uh, university and i've been part of uh, various open source programs such as google summer of code season of dogs and the uh, linux foundation's mentorship program Hello everyone, I'm Dipesha Burse, so I'm a final year student too. Uh, I'm pursuing my bachelor's in computer science and business systems. Um, I have been contributing to CNCF projects for more than a year now, and um, I was also an LFX mentee in the summer term. I worked on refactoring the documentation and w writing new user guides for a CNCF project called Orus. Uh, along with this, I'm also a foundation member at the Gnome Foundation. I have been a community manager, uh, and I yes, I'm, I'm deeply passionate about open source. So uh, we have contributed to the following organizations. Uh, so these are the basic list of organizations that we have contributed as mentees through various open source programs, such as uh, Google Summer of Code or Season of Docs, and the uh, uh, organizations range from CNCF ecosystem to Python ecosystem and even API specification projects. And uh, when we started uh, contributing to these projects, uh, they were very new to us and we didn't uh, know much about back then. And it took us some time to figure things out, uh, right from how Git worked. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, even years later, we know how uh, things work, uh, but we know how to approach things a bit better. Uh, and it still takes to, takes us some time to understand how a new community or a project works. Uh, the doubt, the learning, uh, it's still there, uh, which is why we feel strongly about this topic. So, uh, moving on to why this topic. So, uh, like uh, he previously mentioned, um, we do still still feel a little out of place maybe when you're starting out or something like that. So um, we decided to research a little bit about this topic. So about 70% of working professionals generally feel this way, at least at some point in their lives. And if we just talk about the US, it's around 82%. Uh, if we specifically talk about mentees, mentees are often unaware of what imposter syndrome is, which we both were too, and which is why it gets a little more difficult to deal with it. So they may find it difficult to voice their opinions, actively engage in discussions, or anything of that sort. So giving any kind of feedback, they, they might hesitate to do that. So uh, it can also lead to uh, mentees uh, setting unrealistic standards for themselves or uh, striving for perfection, even though that's, that's not required or expected out of them. So it can prevent them from taking calculated risks, or they might miss out on certain opportunities because of this. Uh, additionally, mentees are unaware that they have imposter syndrome. They might even never know about it. And uh, uh, this lack of awareness from uh, uh, like can isolate them from further opportunities and talking to their mentors or other guides. Uh, there's no fixed guidance available on how to deal with it. 
and lastly we both felt imposter syndrome in earlier stages of our contribution uh, we weren't able to communicate properly or talk to mentors talk to project maintainers and thus lost a few opportunities in the process but only after we started talking to mentors uh, community uh, communicating with the community members we got to lo learn more about the project and it wasn't as daunting as we thought it was and uh, certainly we gained confidence to actively engage and seize those, op seize those opportunities. Uh, additionally, when we were researching about this topic, we went to the two obvious platforms, which is the Reddit and the X, uh, Twitter. So there were many people talking about it and there were many memes shared about it and uh, people were like open about it and also discussing and then sharing their views and their opinions about it. So that's the reason we chose uh, to speak about this topic today. So um, what is imposter syndrome? So before we tackle it, we need to know what it is. So imposter syndrome is basically just feeling like an imposter or a fraud in, the, in your own life, even though you do have the skills. So you, it may be characterized by feeling insecure, feeling inadequate, doubting whether you belong there, all of those things. It often leads to anxiety, low self-esteem, or sometimes even depression. Um, one thing uh, which is worth noting is while we were researching, we came to know that it was first only researched on women. So it was called imposter phenomenon, which was only found in professional women. Over the years, research also happened on men, so men and women do feel this way. But uh, even today, there are uh, some studies that show that uh, underrepresented groups feel it more or they have a higher tendency of feeling imposter syndrome because they see lesser people from their groups uh, in, the, in leadership roles and, and they may feel discouraged. So um, when we talk specifically about imposter syndrome in in open source or when you're starting out. Uh, Asmit and I felt these and a lot of people who we spoke to uh, felt imposter syndrome by the following points in open source. Uh, so when we are talking about imposter syndrome in open source, uh, these are some specific points that we jot down and we wanted to discuss about it. So the first point uh, that we thought was mentees feel like only good or uh, real developers can contribute to open source projects. They should know every tech stack right from the beginning. They should understand the code right from the beginning. And uh, they can't like, uh, you know, figure out good first issues and they need to contribute to something complex, uh, which certainly isn't possible as it, take, it takes time to understand the project. And uh, this is, these are the, some of the two common myths that uh, mentees feel when they first land on the open source project. Uh, then also, uh, they think that mentors will feel they are incompetent if they ask questions, uh, but that's certainly uh, not the case. Many mentors expect uh, mentees to ask questions, research about their project, and then come up with their own solutions and ideas. Uh, and, and that way, mentors also feel uh, like happy and like they also help the mentees out of their own way. And then uh, there's also certain doubts uh, where uh, mentees feel like, will anyone from organization uh, review my PRs or the issues? While it uh, certainly takes time to review the issues and PRs, because most of the open source maintainers have full-time jobs and uh, they do open source as a uh, passion. So mentees need to like wait out and uh, uh, wait out and uh, see if uh, they get, uh, get any reviews and PRs in like time. Uh, then next point I would like to highlight would be uh, reviews that point out flaw uh, flaws rather than the areas of improvement. What this means is suppose you now make a PR and now you got a review, but that review uh, suggests you to make some changes. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that it's a negative uh, comment or uh, they don't appreciate your work. It just means that uh, there's some improvement needed in that. And uh, you can take that as an opportunity for learning and implementing it in the other projects as well. Uh, then the next point would be people not knowing code may hesitate to start contributing even to non-code aspects. Uh, they don't know that documentation work, the design work, and all the uh, other non-code aspects of an open source project uh, has an equal weight as to code contributions. 
and thus they hesitate to contribute to the documentation or even design issues. Uh, then uh, not feeling qualified enough to a particular status in the org or a project. Now there might be some cases where mentees have contributed a lot uh, everyone appreciates their work, but they still feel underconfident and they still feel like they haven't done enough and uh, they should do more to get some status in an organization such as a maintainer or a contributor or get some badge. And uh, mentees also wonder if they could ever be a real contributor because they don't have the right background. Uh, they think that they should come from a CS background or a tech background to contribute to open source, which is certainly uh, wrong. I have many of my friends and peers who come from various uh, other backgrounds and they have contributed to open source successfully. So yeah, these are some of the points that we had joined. Yeah. So um, moving on to mentors and their expectations, I think we have a lot of mentors in the crowd. So um, when whenever mentees feel underconfident, a lot of that also comes with the unawareness of what a mentor really expects or uh, what they want you to do. Uh, so we just thought we could get a few points from our mentors, see what they think. So starting off with the basics, a mentor can be anyone who is experienced or who you can trust with advice. That advice could be to help you solve something if you, face, if you run into some problem, or it could be just pointing you in the right direction. So when we are clear about what a mentor expects from us, uh, it's it's easier and it prevents any gaps in communication. So um, knowing how and what you are doing to continue learning or making contributions. So uh, throughout our mentorships, what we focused on was communicating to the mentors what we are currently doing. Uh, it helped them to give us more resources, tell us how to approach uh, the topics that we're learning, the concepts that we're learning. They used to also assign us issues which are related to what we're learning. So it just boosts the learning process a lot more. Um, asking questions after proper research. So most mentors are working professionals and they're giving time outside of their working hours. So it is usually expected that we do proper research before we ask any questions so that um, we make the most of the time and guidance that they're giving us. Any, if you have any updates on the assigned work, you can do it sooner or later, anything of that sort. Anyone who is affected by um, any changes in your work, they should be updated so that they can be prepared in case there is some issue. Uh, discussing reviews and suggestions. So most of the mentors, maintainers really appreciate getting a fresh perspective on different projects. So um, it is usually really appreciated if we're able to discuss, take part in any kind of conversations, even if it's on Slack, any meetings, or really even just on a, on a PR. So these discussions and suggestions really help. Yeah. Uh, so now we have talked about what imposter syndrome is and what mentors expect from their mentees. Uh, we'll now see at how to overcome the imposter syndrome and what are some of the points that you can uh, consider applying. Uh, so the first point would be to recognize the imposter syndrome and challenging it. So you need to question your thoughts that are your thoughts valid? Unless you question your thoughts, it's difficult to separate the reality from underconfidence. Uh, imposter syndrome is common even among experienced developers. Accepting that fact that you feel that way is the first step towards overcoming it. Uh, you can talk to your mentors or your close peers or uh, discuss what you're facing. They will uh, definitely come forward and help you with your thoughts. I remember when I uh, started contributing to open source projects, I reached out to my mentor and I asked him that uh, I'm not understanding the project at all. Do I need to know all the tech stack and do I need to uh, contribute to some other issues and he really like calmed me down first and then he talked to me saying that it's okay to feel that way and then he uh, uh, basically showed a simple guide on how I can uh, first start you know setting projects locally and then uh, understanding what issues I can uh, find out and then contributing towards it. Mm. So that really helped me ahead and uh, I got selected as a Google Sum of Code mentee in that project. Uh, 
so the second point I would like to highlight here is setting small and attainable goals uh, while working on a specific project or towards a larger goal. Uh, make sure to break them into smaller uh, like weekly or bi-weekly goals. Uh, we both had followed uh, this throughout all our major projects and mentorships and that sense of achievement uh, of finishing small tasks that lead up to a bigger one is uh, incomparable and it's very important that you feel good about yourself. Uh, and participate in discussions. Uh, this is like one of the important things that uh, you can do uh, in an open source community uh, and no one would stop you to do that. Uh, so don't hesitate to join the discussions within uh, the communities. Sharing your ideas and knowledge can uh, boost your confidence and help you establish yourself as a valuable mentee. Uh, join the community meetings that uh, may happen weekly or bi-weekly, depends on the projects. And uh, when we were selected as LFX mentees, we used to wake up around like 5 a.m. in the morning, attend those meetings, share our ideas, talk with the other maintainers that gave us uh, another insights of, uh, like other insights of uh, the project. And uh, that helped us really bond with the community much better. Uh, then uh, don't hold back. Uh, your knowledge is always required. Uh, this point goes hand in hand with the last point which I discussed. Uh, the project needs you as much as you need the project. And when you feel like uh, you're not qualified enough, you tend to participate in the discussions less and you hold back yourself. Uh, that way, uh, the project is also missing out on a good idea and uh, everyone contributes uh, in a unique way. So uh, you can bring something unique to the table and your suggestions might just prove to be a game changer for the project. I remember when uh, I was uh, selected as an intern for uh, Google Season of Docs, uh, they really had an old framework for documentation and it was becoming really hard to maintain and update uh, the documentation. So I suggested them that they should uh, move to a new framework. So I uh, deployed a small demo for them and the mentor really liked the idea and he showcased it to his uh, company and the, they adopted the new framework and that's how you can bring small changes to the big open source companies. And then ask for feedback on your work. Uh, getting timely feedback helps you make sure that you're uh, in, heading in the right direction. Uh, please remember that uh, getting reviews is, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that your work is wrong. It just means that it just needs some improvement. And uh, when you get negative PRs or uh, sorry, negative comments or uh, you know, you need to change something on your PR. Don't abandon that PR. Instead, work on it and improve the quality of PR. Th this will not only help you uh, overcome imposter syndrome, but also help you ahead in your career because most of the recruiters checks check the positive discussions that happen in the PR. Uh, I remember that when I had made one PR in the CNCF glossary, it almost took uh, one month to get it merged. And uh, I learned a lot in that process and uh, how to technically write some terms and how to uh, describe it in a more simple language. Uh, then practice self-compassion. Uh, be kind to yourself. Understand that uh, making mistakes to uh, ma making mistakes is, or getting stuck is a part of learning process. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself, and when things don't go as planned, they're just fine. Okay. So ask for help. Um, so it's okay if you don't know everything. No one does. So and especially as mentees, we are here to learn. So. It's okay, sometimes we just can't find an answer because we're not looking in the right places or the answers are very project specific. So I myself have asked very basic questions over the years um, and my mentors have been more than happy to help me out. So the best way to deal with it is being open about the questions that you have. Accept that you have had some role in your successes. This is so important because you are here because of your hard work and no one can take that away from you. If anyone else had achieved everything that you did, you probably would give them credit for it. So uh, a lot of this invalidation that you don't deserve where you are, sometimes, at least for me, I have seen comes from social media 
so maybe getting a reality check on that seeing if it really makes sense to compare yourself with that person all of these things really help and you need to acknowledge the fact that you're here because of you stop comparing yourself to anyone so a little related to the previous point but um i know this is a lot easier said than done but um you need to identify who you're comparing yourself with so as a student i cannot compare myself to someone who has years of experience in the industry it just doesn't make sense so um identifying who you're comparing yourself with and if you're really fascinated by someone's work you can connect with them the best part about open source is the connections that you make so um this approach has helped me a lot to connect with folks from all around the world i have learned a lot i've gotten to upgrade myself um uh, especially because of these connections so the best way is connecting with people writing about it so about 2 uh, years back when i was still pretty new to open source i felt like i wasn't doing enough and i usually express through writing so i wrote a blog about it and surprisingly um, not after the statistics but surprisingly it got the most uh, views or a lot of response so i noticed that a lot of people feel this way and uh, whenever we write about it we are able to you know check our facts we tend to come to logical conclusions so even though this is for maybe someone who expresses the most through writing uh, it might help almost anybody so it's a must try strategy uh being wrong doesn't make you a fake uh the most human thing that we do is exaggerating our mistakes and um undermining everything that we have done before this so making sure that you know that it's okay to be wrong and you might not know everything is is okay and it does not make you a fake uh so yeah uh faking things actually does work so um fake it till you make it uh sometimes it does not make you a fraud uh neuroplasticity literally means shaping your brain by pretending so uh when when you started walking we all fell but that didn't make us a walking imposter so we were just learning so that's okay and yeah we we need to keep trying and yeah that's that's probably how we can beat imposter syndrome uh so yeah uh on a concluding note we would just want to say that imposter syndrome is when we doubt ourselves and feel like we are faking it however it's important to recognize that almost everyone faces it uh, even the most accomplished ones and only by acknowledging this we can find comfort in knowing that we are not alone in our struggles moreover it's crucial to remember that there will always be someone ahead of us and someone behind us we are all at different stages in life embracing the fact that you are upskilling yourself every day will reduce the burden of you feeling like an imposter when you find yourself in the grip of imposter syndrome don't hesitate to reach out to mentors and your friends share your feelings about it and uh, those who have walked the similar path might help you get valuable insights and encouragement uh, we have been now contributing to open source projects for almost 2 and a half years and we still ask a lot of questions but increasingly we find ourselves in the conversations where we are using and understanding the language that was unknown to us a few years ago and the biggest difference isn't just in the terms of what we know but uh, is that the new questions we have no longer make us question whether or not we belong here so yep thank you i uh, hope you liked our presentation it was first time <laughs> was talking we are sweating buckets here so yeah <laughs> So if you have any questions you can yeah. just ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Yes. Um <laughs> uh yeah that's that's actually a really good point um uh 
I, as in like, what a mentor can do to make the mentee feel better, something like that, or yeah, or maybe to overcome the the imposter syndrome, or okay. maybe to yeah. So maybe regular feedbacks, something like acknowledging the work that they're doing or the learning that they're doing in order to maybe sometimes um, we have to work, we have to learn a lot to even make a small change or make a small PR. So maybe acknowledging the fact that so so much of hard work has been put into just doing something small, um, maybe something like that might help. So yeah, at least I think for me, uh, getting acknowledged uh, really matters um after my lfx mentorship i got a message from my mentor appreciating the things that i did and uh, that made me feel really good and i felt more you know as if I'm, I'm in the right place i'm contributing to the right project so i think that that should help yeah cool thanks yeah um any other questions do you want to add anything okay Yeah, thank you very much for this, uh, talking about this important topic. Um, how do you see, you said, like a mentor is, has like, they, are, they have their full-time job and, and they're busy. And as a, or as a student or as like uh, somebody, as a mentee, mm -hmm. um, how much time would you, did, 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 would you like? Like, like what's the, when you say, hey, are you working like 20, 30, how many hours a week? How much time should a mentor put, like reserve and keep free and folk, like to have actually time for being a mentor? Mm. Uh, okay, uh, I'll take that question. Uh, so I don't think that a uh, mentor should keep a fixed time uh, deciding that, okay, I'll give 10 hours to this mentee uh, helping him uh, with this project. Instead, uh, they can help with whatever doubts they have uh, generally, mentors appreciate if mentees do some research about the project, do their homework, and uh, then ask questions. Then mentees are also happy to help them more and uh, you know explain about the project more instead of just uh, sliding into DMs and say, "Hey, I want to contribute. How do I do it?" So yeah, they, I don't think there can be like fixed hours to help improve someone, but it's something that mentees and mentors can both uh, do it like. Uh, coordinating like something like that yeah um, I hope that answers it or yeah, yeah. Um, to be specific I think both of the uh, the mentorships that we've done we usually used to have weekly or bi-weekly calls which were like about an hour and uh, if we had any doubts about the work that was assigned for the week we could just drop them a message and they could answer whenever it was convenient for them so really just one or two hours maybe a week but even the one hour was usually more than enough. So I, I guess, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Well done. Uh, it was a very concise and clear talk. Uh, from the mentee side, uh, how would you advise someone to seek for a mentor? So where do you establish a relationship mentee and mentor in your experience? And what could mentees do to find mentors? I missed the first three minutes, sorry for that. Maybe you explain how you got into mentees, but. No. Okay, okay. Uh, so what we have done throughout is, uh, usually whenever we see a project that we want to contribute to, uh, we do a little bit of research and we find out who the maintainers are, the ones who are active. Uh, we usually text on the public Slack channels or Discord or wherever first and um, if we do want to personally connect, then we just drop a question uh, in the public chat saying, can we message you, DM you personally? And then maybe from there we can connect, we can ask them. And um, if it is an official mentorship, then we usually have the mentors assigned so we can directly talk to them. So if we're talking to a maintainer, then we do it through Slack. And uh, if it is for a mentorship, then we usually text on the public channel and then text the mentor directly. That's usually how we have done it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll add on to that. So uh, uh, this point may like uh, be helpful to new mentees who are like watching. Uh, whenever you are texting mentors, don't just say hi. Uh, I'm I'm this. Uh, I, okay, I want to contribute to this. Uh, you need to like drop a full uh, you know paragraph of 
uh, explaining okay what issue you are facing uh, what you have done before uh, setting up the project what you have done after then maybe add screenshots and uh, that will help mentors get in the problem at once instead of texting back and forth so that might help uh, the new mentees who are uh, actually like looking out for mentors uh, there's also a website for that which i like to share yeah. So this is the website which I found where is the mouse. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it it just explains all the rules that whenever you're texting someone senior or whenever you want some help, don't just say hi or hello. Just explain the whole thing and they'll read through it and they'll explain you and contact you much in a better way. Uh, how hard? Last question. How hard do you think it is to find a mentor or? What is the likelihood, or from your experience, like for you to be reaching out and someone actually dedicating time to helping you and becoming a mentor? Uh, well, uh, generally in our case, when we reach out to contribute to some projects, uh, we first like read through the issues, of course, and see who have opened that issue, and then contribute, uh, like uh, contact them personally. And then if they are if they are willing to help, they help. But if they are not, they connect connect us with someone who is also like uh, working on that issue and that's generally how uh, we get started contributing towards it uh, sometimes it might be hard to find a dedicated mentor uh, like one-on-one -on -one mentors but asking uh, the questions publicly uh, in like channel uh, generally helps so yeah okay um, any other questions Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.